Exactly. Uh, I, I honestly don't know what to, what to comment on that because I just, I really feel like, I still feel like Derrick Rose is still Derrick Rose. Of course, all day, all day. I mean, day. I mean, he's not as explosive as he used to be, but I really, I feel like his mind just isn't unlocked to to really feel like he isn't as explosive as he used to be. Even in time, you know, when he had the Cleveland game, when he dropped thirty against you know Kyrie Irving and, the, and them guys, I still feel like he had it because he had that fire in him to you know to, I want to I want to go out there and I want to show the world that I'm still Derrick Rose. So even if he takes that mentality back, he can still go out there. Even when he had that, and there's a commercial that just came out with a power raid. That just said power through or whatnot. If t- Derrick Rose really takes the message to heart and really powers through this whole injury thing, I really think he can come back. Do you think that he'll be close to 100% when he comes back? Right he wasn't. Playoffs? Honestly, he played, I think, 40 games, 40 to 44 games. I'm pretty sure I looked at it yesterday. He was, he still was 100% or close to 100%. So to say to say that he's a, say he can get close, it just it takes time to really get through these things. It takes time for your injuries to... The interest to go in the back of your mind, you're just like, okay, you know, I just want to go out there and play basketball. It takes time for them to do that. So, I don't know. I, I really feel it's a sad situation. But I feel like if Derrick Rose has the right mindset, he can overcome it. All right. Now, right now, Chicago is pretty much tied with Cleveland for the Central Division. I won't, I won't, I won't last one. Of won't. course not. Now, with, you know, Rose's injury. But you're looking at players, like, that are going to have to step up tremendously, like Jimmy Butler, Paul Gasol, um, Taj Gibson, um, Mike Dunleavy, Joe Kim Noah, like, if they started the playoffs today, like I always like to say, if they started the playoffs uh-huh. today, they would go up against a revamped Milwaukee team. Milwaukee doesn't have, I don't think they have, they don't have, they still don't have Jabari Barker, because Jabari Barker towards ACL. Yes. Uh, and OJ Mayo didn't play last game either. I mean, but you do have a Michael Carter-Williams, Chris Middleton, Jared Bayless, um, and John H- John Henson. You still have Yanis, the Greek freak. I, I right. I'm not going to try to pronounce his he's last name. He's <laughs> nasty. He, he he's pretty good. You know, he, and he's learning every day on the job. Jason Kidd is a second year head coach, coming from Brooklyn. They coming from the uh, from the Knicks. You know, when his last season he played. I really think that I really think Kidd has that team playing with a mentality that you know, even though we're not talented, as long as we can be long physical and long defenders, and you know, we can we can provide we can provide that spark. So. And if you can play defense, like, I mean, we see some of the NBA teams now, like you just said, mm-hmm. like with Golden State or like with OKC, like you see 120, 110, yeah, 15 points. Like, exactly. If you play solid defense and you can limit um, teams that, that are usually going to score a lot of points, mm-hmm. if you can limit them from scoring, you, 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 you'll you stay in the ball game. That's what, you know, Golden, you, you think of defense teams, you think Golden State, uh, Memphis, Houston, um, Cleveland now. Atlanta, those are good defensive teams, and they make good offensive teams because they don't have to rely so much on their defense. Exactly. I mean, they don't rely so much on their offense. Exactly, they don't have you. Don't, when you don't rely so much on your offense, you can provide better defense, and which in turn leads you to provide very, very, uh, very good offense. So when when Golden State, when they when Draymond Green, who's the best perimeter defender in the league, to this to this uh, at this point in time, when he provides a stop, Steph Curry gets out on a break. Can pull up from three, or he can dish it to Clay Thompson, who's trailing him for three. Right. When when those easy transition points come and those easy fast break points come, it's good to it's good to see that. So you know Milwaukee, if they can provide that steady defense, I really feel they can take Chicago because all Chicago right now has right now is a defense. They don't really have any offensive players besides Paul Gasol, Jimmy Butler. Those are only real, the only real offensive creators on the team. Right. So, so to see them, uh, to see them really. Deal with this Derrick Rose injury is going to be interesting. Now listen to their schedule, like uh, some critical games that mm-hmm. they have in the season. Now we you pretty much say it's March, mm-hmm. and you have March in like the first week and a half of April. Mm-hmm. They have to play who you know. Um, they're 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 a feisty team, feisty. And and Paul George, I think he's trying to come back. Yes, Paul George is coming back. You got Toronto. I think he's trying to come back March second. Right. You got Toronto. They still have to play twice. You got Milwaukee, April first. The Cavaliers, April fifth. Miami, April 9th, Brooklyn on the thirteenth, and Atlanta on April fifteenth. The final game of the season for Chicago. Mm. That's a tough schedule. But I feel like if they if they just rely on their defense, I think they'll be they can stay afloat. Stay up and staying afloat is a is a light word to say. Is a is not really a. I'm not stressing that, but staying afloat. I mean, you can stay in a playoff picture. Whether you're the A seed or just or the seven six or A seed, so. All right, moving on to Miami. So we know Chris Bosh is going to be out for the um, remainder of the season. That's also sad. Also, also. also. And you just paid him one hundred and eighteen million dollars. 
Well, you can't do that though. Hit. You I, I, I know. I know. I'm oh, saying, okay, okay, no, okay, okay. I know. I, I'm, I thought I. I, I, no, I no, think no, no, you, no, I didn't think you go over there. No, my heart there. goes out to him because, like, <laughs> I mean, I hate to see people, you know, they have to sit back do the health injuries. Exactly. You know? so, no, nobody wants to see that. Exactly. And, like, it was. I was reading an article and it was. Um, it showed like how other NBA players across the across the league, you know, were just you know, you know, showing love to him. Exactly. And so, like, but for the Heat, I mean, as a team, like, this hurts. A lot. It hurts you. I mean, they, they just got Goran Dragic, but they gave up Danny Granger, Norris Cole. Uh, then they gave up Sean Williams. They gave up. And, they and, gave up some key and, pieces. And two first round picks down the road. So that that bench has been depleted now. So you you just you really don't have a bench. Right. You, You're really depending on the Wild Dane, Mario Chalmers, Dwayne Wade. I saw. And, like and Dwayne Wade to to play consistently and he's, and, and he, not be injured. Exactly. And he's shown that he takes nights off. Nights off, you 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 can't afford to take nights off. Exactly now. now now he can't. So so you're gonna leave the team with in Goran Dragic's hands, and he just got there. So I, I mean, and what is he going? And then he's gonna see, he's gonna, he might feel the LeBron effect of everybody's falling behind me, and I, I don't think this team is gonna win a championship. So you know what I mean? I, right. no, I and, and, you know, it, and and he may feel like Dwayne Wade. He's not gonna he's gonna play one night out of the week. Chris Bosh has been dealing, you know. It is, it is personal reasons and it is health related. Well, Chris Bosh just got 18 million, a max contract, but he's not out here with me. Hassan Whiteside is, I think he's going to be a free agent next year anyway, so he might not be there. They don't, they don't have a draft pick, so it's going to be crucial to see how Pat Riley can band this team together and make and make a winning effort out of them. Because right now they sit seventh in the East at 25 and 31, and but as a positive note, they just signed Michael Beasley. Now that's not positive. Hey. How, I mean, it's still it's still ten day contract. That ain't positive. It is a ten day contract, but my thing is right now you're looking at a Miami team that doesn't really have, well, they never really had a true big man. But I mean, he's not gonna. I don't feel he doesn't have the foot speed. He's not a great. He's not a great shooter. He doesn't have. He doesn't. He, I mean, he, doesn't, he doesn't. He really doesn't play defense. He can't. Sh- I like his defense more than his offense. That's and that's bad. Yeah, that's, that's true. Because they need more offense. Right exactly. Now. They so need more offense. Right Michael Beasley on a Sunday contract. They're they're pretty much going to see if you know he's been. I really feel like they're going to come in there and be like, okay, well this is your trial. Let's see if you can work off for these ten days. And if you work off these ten days, we'll right. give you a second one, third one. Because you go you go in the league, you only offer three, three consecutive consecutive ten day contracts before you have to either hire the guy full time to a contract or you just let him go back to the D League or on the street or whatever you want to do with him. Right. And like their their strength of schedule like um just like Chicago's is not an easy one. They have the Wizards. You know how well the Wizards are playing. Exactly. You got the Brooklyn Nets, you got um Toronto, you have Cleveland, you have Milwaukee, you have Atlanta, and you have Detroit who right now sits two games away from the AC. Eh. Eh. I mean you have eh. to think about that. I mean I just I want to see Miami. I want to see I'm Miami not, make I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not sold on Detroit. I'm just not. I mean, I'm not either. But, I mean, they haven't been the same since the, the 2014. I mean, with the Chauncey Bill, it was the Rick. The, 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 the Reggie Jackson trade was a, it was, it was a good trade, but I just don't feel like they have. He's not. I don't think he's that premier player. They, they just don't have the shooting. They, they really don't. They, don't. they just don't have the wing shooting. Right. All right. So, let's move on to um, the Josh Hamilton case. You know, Josh Hamilton suffered from a drug relapse. Um, using alcohol and cocaine and all these sad stories today. We don't have a good story. Hey man, like it is what it is. <laughs> like it, I mean, it, it, it just it is what it is. But uh, he was submitted. Um, he was previously submitted from February two thousand four to June two thousand six. Um, and he also had a relapse in two thousand nine and two thousand twelve. But I mean, you would have thought that you know he had learned from that. I mean, he had bounced back, had back to back trips to the World Series. Um, with the Rangers, he was exactly. a 2010 American League um, um, MVP, MVP award. So like, I just don't understand like why can't he just get it together? You, Wilson, let me let, let's let's get personal, Wilson. Let's, okay. let's get a little personal. Let's do that. You ever meet that girl? Oh lord. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. Let me get the one. You ever you ever meet that girl that you know that was kind of bad for you, but you was like, nah, man. You know, I think she's different. You know what I mean? All your homies is like, nah, bro, like leave her alone, man. You know, right, I right. she not she not good for you. You know, exactly. she gonna break her heart, or she been with that dude, or she been with that dude, or or she or she you know she dropped out of school, or whatever. But she was like, nah, man, I see, I see the potential of her. You know, I, I see the I see the good in her. And she and she ended up messing you over, and you just like, damn, I should I should have listened to my guys. You know what I mean? So, you, sh- I don't I don't know. That's that's really how I feel about this Josh Hamilton thing. You should. Everybody really, they gave him chance after chance after chance, and he's—I won't say he's—he's he's a mess up or he's a 
or this is the end of his career, but he's, I mean, but he's continue, continuously, you know, doing these things. I mean, I, I, I tell friends and, you know, older people all the time, like, if I was an athlete, mm -hmm. if I was paid, I don't care if it was six million to sit on the bench and come off the bench for five minutes. Like I wouldn't be trying to, you know, go out here and do, you know, crazy things. But if, it, but if you made that six million for your whole life, that six million wouldn't mean much to you, would it? I guess not. So but then, I, so then, so then you would take the more, you would take more risk because you know that six million would would come either way it goes, and you you could cover it up like A Rod did, or you could come out with it like 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 uh, I don't know who, or you could come out with it like A Rod did. You know, it does. It really doesn't matter. You got to really have to see how he comes back from this setback in his career.